Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about the Cypress Park Gang, located in Northeast LA. The Cypress Park Gang used to be a clique of the Avenues Gang, another Northeast LA gang who would later end up beefing with Cypress Park after they defected from the Avenues. Albert Arzate and Johnny Mendoza are members of the Cypress Park Criminal Street Gang, a comparatively small gang that was literally at war with its larger rival gang, the Avenues. Cypress Park claimed as its territory an area surrounded by territory claimed by the Avenues. This case arose from three separate incidents, the first two on the night of September 24, 2010, into early morning hours of September 25th, 2010, and the third on January 22nd, 2011. Albert and Johnny were close friends of fellow gang member Gustavo Husky Flores, who was incarcerated at the time of these crimes. Flores had a child with the assault victim, April. April was a friend of Mr. Mendoza's and an acquaintance of Mr. Arzate's. Lillian, who had previously had romantic relationships with both Albert and Johnny, was a friend of April, as was Cecilia, who was romantically involved with Mr. Arzate at the time of these offenses. On the night of September 24, 2010, April and Lillian went to visit their friend Alejandra, who lived on Granada Street, an area within the territory claimed by the Cypress Park Gang. Alejandra lived with her boyfriend Frank, who was a friend of Albert and Johnny and Mr. Flores. The residence was the third rear of three houses on one parcel of land. April was on the porch with her three-month-old baby. Mr. Mendoza had a shotgun on his side inside his pants, visible to April. Mr. Arzate asked April about Mr. Flores and then went inside in the residence. April heard him referring to her as a noodle lover, a disparaging term referring to the Avenue's gang and saying that she was cheating on Mr. Flores with an Avenue's gang member. April and Mr. Arzate then had a heated argument. The murders and attempted murder occurred on Division Street, main spot of the Avenue's gang territory, about 10 blocks away from the house on Granada Street where April was assaulted. On the night of September 24, 2010, Marvin and the Martinez brothers, who were his cousins, walked from the Martinez home to a liquor store on the corner of Division Street and Eagle Rock Boulevard. Marvin had one beer that night. After they made their purchases, they were walking back along Division Street across the street from a market, the Super A, in the early morning hours of September 25, 2010. They passed the pharmacy and came to some houses in the area. They were walking on a sidewalk in a line with Jose Martinez a few steps ahead and Marvin just behind his cousins. Two males popped out of the darkness. It appeared to Marvin that they popped out behind the wall by the driveway. Marvin was surprised and in shock. The two males were facing Marvin and his cousins who were ahead of Marvin and said, where are you from? A gang related term known to Marvin who grew up and went to school with gang members. Marvin heard one of his cousins scream out, no. He saw what he thought was a shotgun pointed in the direction and ran to his left side toward the street just trying to get away. He heard three or four gunshots and tried to hide by a car, but he was hit and was bleeding and in pain. He laid on the ground and screamed out for help, screamed out it hurts and can't breathe. His whole chest hurt. He had been shot in the back and suffered injuries to his liver, ribs, abdomen, and chest in internal bleeding and had two surgeries. His cousins were dead, both shot in the head, one of them twice from a distance ranging between a few inches to three or four feet. On January 22, 2011, about four months after the murders, April was driving home with her brother, Lillian, and another friend, Kristen. She turned into her driveway and told her brother to get out and open the gate. At the same time, Albert and Johnny and two other Cypress Park gang members, Gabriel Estrada and Johnny Little Boy Medina, approached on foot. Mr. Arzate said, shut up. April said, hey, this is my house. And Mr. Arzate said, this is my hood. April understood him to mean that he could do what he wanted. It was his neighborhood, meaning gang neighborhood. Then Mr. Arzate slapped her on the face. April's brother got out of the car to defend his sister, and Mr. Arzate hit him in the face with a closed fist. April said she was going to call the cops, and Mr. Arzate said, call the cops. 
The cops ain't got nothing on me. Do something. April told Mr. Arzate to leave, and he responded with death threats. As he was walking away, Mr. Arzate lifted up his shirt, displaying a Cypress Park gang tattoo on his stomach. April feared for her life and took his words to mean she was going to end up dead. She finally called the cops on him. Officer Joseph Bain responded to a radio call and found April crying, physically distraught, and riding an emotional roller coaster from anger to crying and fear back to anger. She had very minor swelling and redness on the right side of her face. The next day, police arrested Mr. Arzate for making criminal threats. A special agent from the FBI conducted an analysis of cellular phone records and cell tower locations and concluded that Mr. Mendoza's cell phone moved from an area consistent with the Granada Street residence at 11.44 p.m. to an area consistent with the location of the murders at 11.51 p.m. And the call he placed at 12.54 a.m. was placed from an area consistent with the murder scene. The jury convicted both Albert Orzate and Johnny Mendoza of the first-degree murders of Samuel and Jose Martinez and the attempted murder of Marvin. The court sentenced Mr. Orzate to a base term of seven years on count three, the attempted murder, plus a consecutive term of 25 years to life for the firearm enhancement. The court sentenced Mr. Mendoza to a base term of seven years on count three plus a consecutive 10-year gang enhancement, one year consecutive on count four, and two consecutive terms of life without parole.